Coming up today in episode 208 of Husevik Heroes, we play the first league of the first knockout round for the 2039 Champions League, and it is the top two favourites for this year's competition as we take on Real Madrid. Before then, we check in on how the other Icelandic teams are getting on down in the Conference League knockouts, and also, we've sold a few players. Why and who have we replaced them with? Off the back of the intro. Of it, heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well, and if you are looking forward to the start of this knockout Champions League campaign as we do look to make it back to back titles, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we do have some things to cover off before we do have a look at our opponents. In today's episode, which is Real Madrid, quite a tough tie for the first knockout round. I think it is fair to say, but first things first, we are currently halfway through the knockouts in the first round of the Conference League. And of course, we do have two Icelandic teams in the knockouts of the Conference League this season. So a quick update on that before we reveal what has happened transfer-wise since the end of last week. If you did miss that last episode, our last game in the group against Ajax, as well as this draw, for the first knockout round, I'll leave a link to that one over in the top right corner. But we make our way over now and see how things stand after the first league. And so far, things look quite good for both of the Icelandic teams. As you can see there, Bohemian are taking on HK. 3-1 to HK after the away game there. So HK take a good advantage there back to Iceland. So hopefully, they'll definitely be making their way through to the second knockout round and down just a little bit further. Probably a little bit more surprisingly, but Bill Kier, 2-1 ahead of Fenerbahce after the first leg, albeit that second leg, is going to be played in Turkey, which might make things a little bit trickier there for Phil Kier. But HK certainly in a very good position to be making their way through to the next round. And Phil Kier, and with a decent shout as well, after beating Fenerbahce at home. We will update you guys on those scores in the second leg at the end of today's episode. But as mentioned in the intro... We have sold a few players off the back of the end of last week. A bit of context for this. Two players, their contracts were expiring at the end of this year, and they did not want to renew their contracts. So we cashed in on them before they would leave for a free transfer. And thankfully, two positions, we actually already had some backup at the club for. So we didn't need to go out and buy players. We wouldn't have been able to get them here in time anyway for registration. But also, it means that we can replace them nice and simply. So we cashed in on both players and they were both decent bench options for us too as you can see on the right hand side the first of them was Heiko Kunzi good backup striker that we have had here for a while at Volsunga but he did not want to renew his contract and he has gone to Manchester City for a fee of 25 million pounds Manchester City these days have a lot of strong striking options not too sure if he's going to get that much game time there anyway but as mentioned he did not want to renew his contract and we got just over his transfer value for him anyway. So I don't think it's that bad of a deal. Spent a few good years here at Volsunga after leaving Bayern Munich. He joined us in 2035. Performed pretty well, as you can see there, on that right-hand side over the past four years. And has now gone to Manchester City. So Heiko Kunzi, he has left us. We'll explain how we replaced him shortly. And also backup centre-back Richard Waswa. We have a lot of centre-backs at the club, so we can easily replace him and he has gone to Chelsea for £35 million. Pounds. Was actually still quite a promising centre-back. He's one who could come back and haunt us in future years, but thankfully, not too many years left for me in this save anyway, and we have let him go to Chelsea for the exact same reason we brought him back in 2034 for £39.5 million. Pounds. So we've actually made a slight loss on that transfer, albeit there is a 20% of next sale clause included in that deal with Chelsea. So in the end, that might end up being a profitable transfer, all things going well, provided that he doesn't lose too much value. Now that he has joined Chelsea, and you would imagine going to the Premier League, he should fetch a decent fee for his next move if he does 
make a, another one. So those are the outs. In terms of the ins, just a really basic one on a free transfer. That was Rodolfo Radar. We signed him on a pre-contract a while ago, and he joins us from Atletico Mineiro. He is a centre-back, so kind of replacing what we've lost there. And Richard Waspar, fairly promising, and he's going to spend his first season or so at the club. And the under-19, so in terms of those sales and how it changes our squad going in to the second half, of the Champions League season, it doesn't change too much. Gabriel Kapan, he makes his way onto the bench. And Erdin Scheite now is registered for the Champions League. And in terms of a backup striker, Ori Poor Helson back from his loan at Akranes after we signed him off the back of that interest from some foreign clubs. We register him, and he looks like a very, very good backup striker. Homegrown nation, of course, because he did come from Akranes. Like the look of him, he's already got a hat trick in a domestic game and he will be a more than able backup, a pretty good fill-in there for what we did just lose in Heiko Kunze. So I don't think we're actually going to need to spend anything to replace those players who we have just sold. Thankfully, a bit of future planning done here at the club, and what that means is our transfer budget has only gone up since the end of last week, now up to £164 million, and we still have 440000 roughly in wage budget as well as most of the players are tied down for another couple of years as well. So most players, we don't need to renew their contracts anymore in the safe. So that is certainly a lot of transfer budget for us to play with now that the domestic transfer window has opened, albeit we're probably just going to wait until the end of this European season because we do have a bit of time before we need to worry about other clubs being interested with our transfer window at the moment, not overlapping with anyone else in Europe with the weird way that this Icelandic transfer window does work but in terms of what we have done on field since the end of last week we've started off the deal of a car with three games and we've picked up pretty comfortable wins in all of them the first two games we did put out for the most part our first choice 11 a few players missing for the first couple of games of this due to AFCON that was Adam Saki as well as Basaro Gay it actually worked out for us because those two players got knocked out fairly early a little bit surprising there with Adam Saki and Morocco, because they have won it the last couple of times. But nonetheless, our first game was against IR, and it was poor house, and actually picked up four goals in that game. Also, hit trick to Dombia, and a very comprehensive 11-0 win off the back of that. We took on Glotta away from home, picked up an 8-0 win. Saki came back for this one, got a double alongside Lapise, and then our rotation team took on Lechnia. Maurizio Menga hat trick, as well as a Christopher Alagar double, as well as two red cards to Lechnia. And we pick up a 5-1 win. So already looks like we're in quite a strong position to be getting out of this group. The only thing that could potentially trip us up is if Keflavik beat us. But I don't think that is likely to happen. Of course, Keflavik did not do a great job in the group stages of the Europa League. So we should definitely be getting past those guys and hopefully win yet another League Cup title. So with all that out of the way, we can start to focus on the first league of this Champions League first knockout round at the moment. This is what has happened on the top half of the draw. Dortmund and Barcelona nil all after the first league. Man United picking up a 2-0 win away from home. AC Milan 3-2 over PSG. So that tie is quite even as is Juventus versus Arsenal. Juventus holding a 2-1 lead after their home league. And as you can see coming up, us and Real Madrid, who for Berlin and Sporting, Bayern Munich and Man City as well as Lille and Chelsea. Real Madrid, a team that we are quite familiar with, though, off the back of the last couple of years. We did beat them last season in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. I did think it was the semifinals. It was a little bit earlier. And, of course, the season before then, they did beat us on penalties in the Champions League final, albeit off the back of that. We bet them on our way to winning the Club World Cup. In terms of their team, they've got a few older players now who have just started to phase their way out of the club. They've still got players like Kylian Mbappe, but he's 40 years old now, so I don't think he's going to get quite as much game time as over previous years, but they do still have quite a few notable names there, the likes of Yusuf Makoko up top, Jamal Musiala out on the left-hand side, Kamavinga in the midfield, and of course one of our former players, Ali Ramadan, is one option for them at centre-backs. There's a few good players scattered in there in that Real Madrid team, and they have closed the gap on Barcelona since we checked on them at the end of last week, I say close the gap. They've moved up to second on the table, but still four points behind them. They just have dropped Raul Sociedad slightly there in that top three race, but they are certainly still in the title hunt there over in Spain. But hopefully we can do to these guys what we did last season and really get a decent result away from home 
and give them a bit of a slapping up back in Iceland because last season we definitely did that, bet them 5-0 and that was very, very satisfying indeed. In terms of our team going into this one though, just the one injury concern going into this one is that Filippo Dinelli has recently returned from a little niggly injury. He's only recommended for 45 minutes. That does mean that we are going to have to start someone in his place. Not too sure exactly what we are going to do yet, but we'll decide that in a little bit and come back shortly with the team sheets for the first league of this Champions League first knockout round from the Bernabeu as we take on Real Madrid. And here are the team sheets for this first leg. There are Real Madrid. As you can see, a little bit different to what we were expecting. Ramadan on the bench, but one of our other former players, Tomohiro Horikawa, is up front, which is interesting. The change that we made, because Danelli can only play 45 minutes, Gabriel Capan just starts over him, so a pretty straight out change there. And hopefully we can pick up a decent result here away from home. And we go forward to the six minute mark here for our first highlight. Adam Saki did just have the ball inside the box of Real Madrid and Kapan there off the back of a clearance. Did win the header, but he's coy out position here. Chance for Horikawa against his former club. Tries to chip well in there, but thankfully that goes just over the bar. But a good chance there for Madrid on the counter attack, but it remains nil all coming up to the 10 minute mark. And a few minutes off the back of that opening highlight, we are back down our end here for a corner, and Gabriel Capan gets his head on the end of that, already looking dangerous in the air, but it does come off the crossbar, and still nil all coming up now to the 15-minute mark. And right on the brink of half time here in this first half, no highlights since that little opening flurry around about the 10-15 minute mark, but we did have a throw in there, and are still on the attack. Lapisay just keeps that ball in, but Makoko tracks back and clears it, but Jonathan Berger is here to try and get us back on the front foot before halftime. Pretty even game at the moment, just starting to take a slight statistical advantage late in this first half. Nice ball there, though, for Aga Tigre. And for some reason, Hemmingson does not even try and make a save there, just caught off his line ever so slightly. And Aga Tigre beats him there just inside that far post from that far side. And that is a great goal just before halftime. And we do take a lead. Going into the second half, nice ball there from Bayer and Aga Tigre first time finish and Hemmingson just not really expecting that in goal for Ray Almadre. It's a very good finish there from our Argentinian right winger and just like that, we grab a 1-0 lead right before half time. As you can see, the stats did just start to edge our way late in that first half, so we'll definitely take that. Also had a good chance earlier through the header of Capano, albeit Real Madrid also had a good chance down the other end through Horikawa, so I think that scoreline at the moment is probably fair enough. Most guys out there playing okay at the moment. Gabriel Capan did go down to a red heart late in that first half, so we'll probably have to take him off sooner rather than later, but we'll leave things as they are to start off the second half, and at the moment, we hold a 1-0 lead. And just past the 50-minute mark, we have our first highlight here of the second half. It is a goal kick to Ray Almadrin. They look like they're going to take their time here playing out from the back. We put a bit of pressure on them. It'll be interesting to see here if we can win the ball nice and high up the field. Grant Scoff puts the ball over the top there. They do keep it Real Madrid. Put in there from Elaine Basicki, but they are still on the attack. Nice ball there from Hori Carr and actually forces a good save off the subsequent shot there from Amrani Kaoval and keeps that out of the back of the net. Hopefully nothing else doing here from the subsequent corner. And thankfully, Gabriel Capan still doing great work in the air and keeps it 1-0. Fairly early on here in the second half. He has just gone down, though, to a red heart. So we'll probably take him off off the back of this for Filippo Dinelli. is playing quite well, actually. A lot better than Bussero Gay is, which is interesting. And Bussero Gay here is on the balls. It does look now that we're going to take our time trying to play out from the back off the back of this next highlight. Bussero Gay only on a 6.5, but certainly has a lot more energy than Filippo Dinelli. Hopefully he improves his performances once his usual centre-back partner does come on the field. But we eventually now start to get on the front foot. Dumbi, a nice one too there between him and Ben Venu Bayer and just lifts that one into the top left corner. It's a slightly messy goal off the back of Adam Saki losing position. But thankfully Dumbi in a really good position there sets up the 1-2 with Bayer. And we take a 2-0 lead here nice and early in the second half. Nyanzu brought down Saki but from there... A big gap for Lasana Dumbia to exploit. And he just lifts that one nicely into the top left corner. And just like that, we have a 2-0 lead here at the Bernabeu. We are going to make that substitution. It will be Denali for Kapan. And we are 2-0 up with about 35 minutes left. 
And just inside the last three minutes of this one, still with a 2 0 lead, and has been quite an even game, so quite heavy with the scoreline. But Jean Avias Lapasse not going too well out there. Alagard can come on for him, and we'll see if anything changes here in these last 20 minutes. And shortly off the back of that second substitution, we're going to make our last one. Lasana Dumbia playing well, but down to a red heart. Bruno Costa will come on for him, still 2 0 Volsinger. And entering the closing stages of this one, it is a corner here for Ray Almadrid, but Christopher Allegar will head that one away, but they are still in position here. Just outside the box, we try and clear it, but don't quite get it far enough. So Real Madrid here can still try and launch an attack to grab a goal, which would make it a bit closer going into the second leg, albeit now we get a chance here on the counter-attack. One more goal, and it might almost put this tight to bed, hopefully going back to Iceland. For that second leg, and Agatigare finds some space here down the right-hand side as Rodinko Krolo plays that one back for Basicki. Bruno Costa gets taken down by a shocking tackle by Laboso, who has just come on for Kamavinga off the bench, and now they are down to 10 men. This could get very interesting late. Alagard here with a free kick, but he puts it wide. Real Madrid now down to 10 men, and we still hold a 2-0 lead. And we have just entered injury time here in this one. Basaro Gay did just pick up a yellow card, so I've told him to ease off tackles just to make sure we get no silly suspensions. Going into that second leg, but that is a pretty good performance. Quite an even game. Real Madrid can feel a little bit hard done by there based on the stats, but we were a bit more efficient in front of goal through Agatigare as well as Lasana Dumbia, and we take a 2-0 lead back to Iceland, and also Real Madrid do have a red card to deal with, albeit for one of the replacement midfielders, so it might not be too difficult for them to replace him, but that is a big win away at the Bernabeu, the top two teams supposedly in the Champions League this season, and we take a very good advantage back to Iceland for that second leg in tomorrow's episode, and hopefully that is a good enough advantage that we can afford a slight slip up if we make one and still make our way into those quarterfinals, and from there we would take a lot of confidence having already knocked out a team like Ray Almadrin, and of course off the back as well of our performances in the group stage. And the other tie on this match day, Hertha Berlin with a 3-0 win over Sporting. We'll come back shortly, update you guys on those final two ties after the first league, and also see if the other Icelandic teams have finished off the job in that first knockout round of the Conference League. And about to wrap things up for today's episode, first off a Champions League update, the last two ties played on the match day after ours, a big result there first up, Bayern Munich picking up a 4-0 win over Manchester City, they are certainly on the ropes, one of the stronger looking teams in Europe, might be making their way out after the first knockout rounds, that would certainly do us a big favour if Manchester City got knocked out by the second best team in Germany these days, and below that Chelsea get the job done over Leal 3-1, they are in quite a strong position going into the second leg of that first knockout round tie, but certainly the headline result there, 4-0 Bayern Munich over Manchester City, but now it's time for us to go and check in on how things did finish up down in the Conference League, and thankfully both Icelandic teams did finish the job there, 1-0 wins for both HK over Bohemian and Phil Kier against Fenerbahce, that one away from home, so that is a really good result there fulfilled here and that means that both Icelandic teams are making their way through to the second knockout round of the conference league and Phil Kier in particular a really good result there as they knocked out a team dropping down from the Europa League so great work there by both of the Icelandic teams what that does mean for the second knockout round HK take on Xavi's out of Portugal that could be quite a big tie in terms of making up some ground on Portugal on the coefficient table so hopefully HK can beat those guys I would favor them over Xavier certainly not a team that you see in Europe too often so hopefully that's a tie which HK can win also Phil Kier they take on beer shot out of Belgium I'd like to think off the back of beating Fenerbahce they will also have a good chance in that round as well so there is a chance there that some of the Icelandic teams could go a little bit deep in this conference league this season and that will certainly help us have a good year on the coefficient table, just a quick look at these opposition, the other Icelandic teams do have Xavier's out of Portugal, as mentioned. That would be quite a good win in terms of the coefficient table, albeit currently actually in quite a good position, it looks like, as they are second in the Portuguese league, not too far behind Sporting out of Portugal. So they might be a little bit tougher than I was expecting in Beershot, the team which Phil Kier are taking on, currently find themselves all the way down in 10th 
in the Pro League in Belgium. So I'd like to think that's definitely a team which Phil Kerr can take care of. And those will be a couple of very nice results if they can go the way which will hopefully be in our favour and help us build up on that coefficient table nicely and get a few more points. Just an update on that already on a 9.6 Portugal on a 9.9 .9 and they are certainly getting rid of a much better year than we are. So this could be a good year for us to try and make some gains on Portugal and close that gap on those guys up in sixth on the coefficient table. And also we'll just do a quick, quick update here on the Europa League. There are other ties for the second knockout round if you are interested. And that is off the back of what happened in the first knockout round there. Pause that if you are interested. Of course, we don't have much interest in the Europa League these days with no Icelandic teams a part of it. But that will do it for today's episode. Good result there away from home at the Bernabeu against Ray Al Madrid. That does mean we take a 2-0 scoreline back to Iceland for that second leg in tomorrow's episode. If you did enjoy today's one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow and hopefully make our way through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League and beat Real Madrid. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.